call the Health Committee meeting to order. October 3rd, 10.30 a.m. Let's call the roll. Polkenauer. Present. Hoffman. Here. Pursley. Present. Whitwell. Here. Crumwitty. Present. Are there any public comments? Here. <laughs> the agency reports. Llewellyn has already reported. Do you have anything for this committee as well? Nothing new beyond <laughs> <laughs> the earth's light is gone already. So we'll move on to the next item of business, which is the uh, Iroquois County Public Health Department. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the first thing handout that I gave you was your grants and contracts list. Um, I don't give that out every month, but I have the last few months because I want to show you what we've been doing with some of these grants and contracts um, since I previously spoke with you. So since our last meeting, which was on September 5th, um, we have gotten um, the lead poisoning case management grant. I'm so sorry. Here you go. Um, here, let me give you a, an unwritten on one, like a clean copy. Here, I have lots extra. <laughs> Thank you. I think this is actually. Oh, that's fine. That's oh. okay. <laughs> I throw them on the table, kind of. They kind of scatter once in a while. Um, so, if you look at at what's been going on over the last month, um, if you take a look at the lead poisoning case management grant, last year that grant was one thousand and eighty-five dollars. This year we applied for uh, five thousand and five hundred dollars. The state allowed us to apply for that. The state is changing, you know, because. I'm sure you're all aware of what happened in Flint, Michigan. The mm -hmm. same thing happened is happening in Galesburg, Illinois, um, in Knox County. And their health department is um, working very diligently to mitigate, you know, to be involved in the mitigation of that process. But there was lead, 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 lead in, in mostly in public water systems and private water systems. Um, is this a surprise to them or no? No. <coughs> been there for a long time. Just now seeing the effects of it. Um, Has anybody in this room been to Galena before? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get the history on the lead there? Yeah. 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 Average Pretty. life expectancy 38 years old. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something. Now, so the base lead grant that we could apply for was $2,500. The state is actually giving us a $3,000 additional grant amount because that's based on our cases last year. They, they will allow you to apply up to $600 for each case you had the previous year. So last year we had five cases that Vonda had to make home visits on and go through the whole mitigation process. So, which we'll, we can do a presentation on that separately for you some other time. Now, but, is this Wells? Um, Who are they in a certain area? Or? Well, a lot of these cases, these lead poisoning cases, are the person is lead poisoned. They, they come up with gotcha. high lead levels, so they're rescreened, it, it still comes up high. So we have to go in and determine whether it, what the, you know, help them determine whether it came from wells or whether it came from lead based paint or whether, you know, you're, you're doing a whole mitigation pro, a whole investigation and then a mitigation process with the state um, lead case management manager involved. So we were allowed, to, allowed this year to apply up to 5,500. So that's what I applied for. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, the next one is the Local Health Protection Grant. Remember last year I talked to you about why that number increased by $2,000 because some, some, some um, state grant amounts are going down and some are going up. I, I keep saying this to you, but I, want, I hope that I explain it well enough to make you understand that all of these, when you look at this grants and contracts list, all of these grants are for services and um, programs that we provide to the county that are be above and beyond the programs that we're required to have as a certified local health department. So I, I know I, I've explained this before, but to be a certified local health department, you have to have the minimum of these six programs. You have to have food, water, septic, immunizations, communicable diseases, and a TB program. Okay, None of our grants cover those programs. That's what your local tax levy is for, to cover those programs. Okay. So um, the Local Health Protection Grant is a state stipend to help with those programs um, because they, they know that a lot of public health departments are at max tax levy and still struggling to stay alive. 
obviously you saw in text today that we're not at max tax levy. We're not even close to our max tax levy as a public health department. So that's a good thing. Um, and we're doing okay. Um, but the local health protection grant um, was completed, I told you last, at the last meeting on September 5th that I would have it done within the next few weeks. I got it done and submitted on the 7th. Um, the public health emergency preparedness grant, if you'll notice, had to be re-signed on the 7th. And that was due to some state changes. They do not affect our grant deliverables at all. Our grant deliverables stayed exactly the same. The state changes were in the contract language, their contract language, but it did not affect our deliverables. Um, we finalized the West Nile virus grant, which is actually called the Vector Control Grant, on September 7th. And then on the 26th, we um, received our notification of the state radon grant. They changed that this year. They're changing our grants. And we knew that this was coming. The state radon grant, we don't even have to apply for. <coughs> they just sent me a new contract. Cool. I signed it. We're done. Really? Yeah. Cool. Um, because they, any anyone who has shown um, high levels of radon in their county automatically gets the grant again. Mm -hmm. So that was that's nice, but I didn't have to go through the whole eGrams grant application process. I just they sent me a contract, I sent them our request, they sent us the max they would give us. I signed the and they then they you know, I filled out a I have to fill out a uh, a couple other forms and send it to them once a risk assessment questionnaire and um, you know, you have to go through the whole um, notice of funding opportunity process. But, but we didn't have to actually send in an application and wait for a decision. They just sent us the contract. So that was nice. And that grant remains at the same amount. Um, you'll notice that the child and adult care food program and summer food programs don't have anything listed on them, right? Well, those are changing as well. So last year, um, this is a three-year, typically a three-year grant, and usually we can get about $300 a year if we have child or adult care food programs in Iroquois County. There are no longer any, zero, child and adult care food programs. We don't have adult daycare in this county, and the child daycares are supplemented through other, you know, things, so we don't have to inspect them because they're inspected by the regulatory bodies. So we don't have those anymore. And as far as the summer food program, we only have one in Iroquois County, and that's the Watsika Park District. So the most we're eligible for, even if I apply for those grants, would be $100 per year. I am going to spend the time and fill out that grant application to get us that $100. Um, just because I think that, it, you know, in the future, if any of these things would come up later, mm -hmm. and we would have more of those programs later on, by, offered by different entities. Sometimes schools in the county do have summer food programs. Glen Raymond and the Watsika High School have done summer food programs in the past. They did not this year, but they have. So we want to maintain our status for that. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. But the most we're going to get from those two grants combined, and it's a combined application this year instead of two separate ones, so your grants and contracts list is going to change a little bit, is going to be $100. Um, and you can apply for that any time throughout the next three years. They're, they've left that open-ended. Um, I'll probably get it done within the next month or two, but um, I just wanted you to know that that whole thing is changing. You know, it's not going to be separate grants. It's going to be a grant, a combined grant. And you're only going to be able to apply for what you're eligible for in your county. So that number's going to go down, okay? Any other questions about our grants and contracts list? <coughs> okay. So if you compare this year to last year, it looks about the same. Pretty much. I guess I'm going to ask a maybe not a very uneducated question. But did we just take over the Illinois Liquor Control? Yeah. Did we just do that? Yes. When did that happen? Um, we, in July 1st. I thought it was. Mm -hmm. The state used so to. So why did we take it over? Well, the state used to do that, and then they contacted a local health departments because the state was cutting down their staff. So they contacted local health departments and offered us seventy-five dollars <coughs> for every inspection we do. Okay, so you don't have to apply for that. This no, is what they, they just offered us okay. a contract, <coughs> and that contract um, they specifically state on there that there are seventy-nine 
places in Iroquois County that need to be inspected, and they'll pay seventy five dollars per place. So we've been doing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. No problem. Um, any 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 other questions on the master contracts list? Okay. So the next thing is your program summary report, and that's the, the handout that you get every month with our numbers on there. I must have handed out my copy. So somebody's got my copy with the uh, handwriting on it, but that's okay. No. <laughs> well, we got one, one. <laughs> that's all right. What's this one? Nope, here it is. Yeah. Thanks. So this um, program summary report, you know, when there, when I listened today with um, the ARC and ABRA and the 7377 board and Mel Health doing their presentations, which were wonderful because I think that they, those are so valuable and so needed in our community. The difference between, um, the numbers that I give you and the numbers that they give you are the, the numbers that they give you are their client served. When you when you see our numbers here, I, I need you to keep in mind that we serve everyone in Iroquois County. Public health makes sure everyone has has safe food, safe water. Um, we make sure that we're mitigating all communicable diseases on, that are on the Illinois Reportable Disease List, and it contains everything, even chicken pox. Um, we serve everyone. Um, and we serve everyone on a daily basis. So when you look at these numbers, these may be the investigations that we've currently been doing. But let me let me give you an example. So so if you flip over to the second page, and, and, and we'll flip back and forth here today. Usually I kind of go in order. But if you look at, like, say, the MRSA outbreak, where it says one, yeah, that's one MRSA outbreak. But six individuals were infected. So you don't... Our numbers don't always reflect the, the clients that we're serving. So I, I want to point that out and make you aware of that because I think that that's important that I communicate um, the value of our services. We're all safe and healthy every day because of the things that public health does behind the scenes that you're mostly unaware of and don't realize that we do. And I think that that's, that's something that... Um, it's difficult to communicate. How do I tell you that we prevented X amount of deaths because we stopped one case of something? How do I prove to you how many lives I saved when we know that we're saving lives? Because if you look at third world countries that don't have a public health infrastructure, you see people dying of diseases every day that you don't see in the United States because of what we do. Um, so, Kevin, you asked a question about the liquor inspections. If you look on that front page at the very bottom, see how it went zero, 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 zero? Well, that's because um, in July, they just went through the training at the beginning of July, and excuse me, and then at the end of July, they did six. Now, in September, they did 59. <coughs> so you'll see those numbers um, coming along. And you will notice by our numbers and our trends how things are seasonal. Yeah. If you flip over and you look at the community health stuff, you can tell what's seasonal. Flu vaccines, obviously, we're not giving a lot of those in May, June, in June, in July, or even in August. But look at our flu vaccines for September. We can tell that our our flu season's coming up on us. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of flu clinics scheduled this year throughout the county. We're trying to make it easily accessible for all residents. We also did something different this year. Bonders worked very hard. Anyone can walk into the health department anytime, Monday through Friday, from 8.30 to 4.30, and get a flu shot, which is really nice. So people don't need an appointment. We're here for you. We work for you. Um, and we want to make it convenient for you. But we also have flu clinics all over the county and all different hours. I've been talking to you each and every week, month about our immunization numbers. So this, in September, we gave 254 childhood immunizations. Last year, in September of 2016, we gave 59. Well, that's because I am age. Right. 
and it's going to continue to be that way. And that's okay. And that's okay. We're, we're doing it. Um, and and, and <coughs> these children now are being immunized, and they're meeting the school requirements to get into school, and we're keeping our community safe. Mm -hmm. um, many of you are very familiar with the term herd immunity. Um, community immunity is a really um, important thing. It really is. I would like the slogan that we had on the billboard years ago that said, community immunity, do your part. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that you usually ask me about is the, are the rabies um, investigations. Um, they, we had two vaps that tested negative, and then the other two cases that were investigated were ch children, two children, different children, sleeping in rooms where um, the bat was found, caught, but unfortunately a family member released the bat, so there was no bat to test. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, they meet the Illinois Department of Public Health requirements for exposure. So then um, we, we consult with IDPH, and then obviously we recommend the, the post-exposure prophylaxis treatment, the PEP, for, for rabies, um, and whether someone decides to, have to do that for their children or not is their own personal decision. We make the recommendation and we offer to help them set up their appointments and do whatever that needs to be done, but ultimately that decision then belongs to the parents of the children. Um, do you have any other questions about, about our, our numbers? Um, I do want to make you aware that our senior service program numbers are surprisingly continuing to go up, which really isn't surprising because usually they fall off in the summer hours and in the fall hours. But if you look at the population of Iroquois County, uh, the number of our population that's over the age of <coughs> 60 is a bigger percentage than it ever has been before in the past. Um, so I think I told um, you last month that we have an employee who will be retiring in about six months. We have replaced that position and the new person started yesterday and um, meets all the state qualifications for that position, which we are very lucky to find. Mm -hmm. Very lucky to find. So that's good, a good thing. So there'll be training and um, the training has started off for the CCU, CCP Community Care Program. And then once that training is completed, then they'll start the other training programs for like adult protective services and, and the other programs that they that we do in senior services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions about our summary report programs? No. Okay. The next thing that I have for you is the ordinance. I apologize to you for having to bring this back to you. You have already approved this one, but I have to bring it back to you because I, what I brought to you was an amendment to the ordinance. And then I found out we can't amend an ordinance. You have to replace an ordinance with a new ordinance. So it's the exact same piece of paper, exact same yellow highlighted area, exact same thing that you did last time, except I'm not asking you to amend the ordinance. I'm asking you to approve this as a new ordinance. So the ordinance number before was 2014, and this is 2017. Do you need a motion? Anyone? I'll make a motion. Second move. Seconded by Barb to approve the ordinance. All in favor to approve say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, I told you at the last meeting that we would talk to you a little bit about our fecal and chemical testing, so that's the little ditty that Fonda and I are going to bring to you today. I had actually um, hoped to have it up and running <coughs> um, by, 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 by now, but we're going to need a few more weeks before this program is actually up and running. Uh, it, the the um, paperwork end of it is always a little more tough than what you think when you're writing policies and procedures and getting them approved and um, standing orders and all, all that kind of stuff. We're, we're, we're getting there. We have our standing orders signed. We have our policies in place. We have our procedures in place. We have our, our letters um, 
we have some of our advertising in place. We have a lot of things in place. Um, our kits just came, yep. so we, we have received those now. Um, Mondi, do you want me to start or do you want to start? Um, you can go ahead. Okay. So the fecal immunochemical testing is a service that we're going to be offering to anyone in Iroquois County. Um, this is fecal immunochemical testing is a screening for colorectal cancer. Um, colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. And Illinois is ranking right up there. And we are seeing more and more colorectal cancer um, deaths in Illinois than we ever have in the past. Um, if you can catch colon cancer in its first stage, the five-year survival rate for someone is 92%. If you don't catch it until the fourth state stage, the five-year survival rate drops from 92% down to 11%. So catching it early is huge, just like anything else. So we thought that in order to um, help the citizens of Iroquois County, that we would offer fecal immunochemical testing um, at very, very low cost to them. Um, our, our goals of this program are to educate on the importance of early detection and to educate on the importance of colon cancer screening. Okay? The state has a strategic plan for this program and they would like to see 80% of people ages 50 and older screened um, over the next few years, by, 20, by the end of 2018. That's, that's a lot. We want to make this very clear, and if you don't listen to anything else I tell you, I need you to hear this. This is not a diagnostic test. This does not test, will not tell you if you have colorectal cancer or not. This is a screening test to see if you have blood in your stools. It's testing for hemoglobin. This test does not, and I'm going to repeat this, does not take the place of a colonoscopy. A colonoscopy is a diagnostic test and is by far the best test. And everyone should, over the age of 50 should be getting a colonoscopy. Every, you know, that should be done. But there are a lot of people who won't do it. And there are some barriers <coughs> to why people won't do it. So some barriers for that kind of screening are things like affordability. It's expensive. A colonoscopy is very expensive. And not everyone can afford it, especially if they don't have insurance. People can't miss work. It's a huge issue. For people age 50, are still, a lot of them are still working. And they can't miss work. They don't want to, you know, they need to save their, their sick days for their family members, their parents, or their children, or whatever. Another thing is the lack of symptoms. A lot of people don't have symptoms of colorectal cancer until it's way too late. So if people think that they don't have symptoms, they think they're fine. There are a lot of perceptions of the unpleasantness of a colonoscopy. So a lot of people don't want to go through that because they don't want something inserted into, that rectal, into the rectal orifice. Um, you would be surprised how many doctors don't stay on their patients and keep recommending it and recommending it, which is probably your number one reason why you go do it because you've got a doctor saying, you've got to get this done, you've got to get this done. Um, people, there are people who think that because they have no family history of colorectal cancer that they're not going to get it. That's not true. And then there's always the issue of a priority of other health problems. A lot of people have other health problems and they stick this on the back burner because they don't have symptoms. Mm -hmm. They don't go get tested. So at least this offers them a screening that would let them know how urgently they need to go get a colonoscopy. So most insurances will, companies are, will, will pay for this testing that we're going to do at the health department. If you're 50 to age 75, almost all insurances will pay for it. So it's not going to cost people anything out of pocket. They're already paying for it through their health insurance, right? Um, if you're under the age of 50 and you have a family history and you'd like to be tested or you've seen some blood in your stool or whatever, 
it's gonna, we're going to charge $10. That's it. Okay? Um, it's a really easy, non-invasive test that you do in the privacy of your own home. <coughs> um, so, you want to talk them through the test? Well, <laughs> pretty easy. It is pretty easy. So, the test comes with this little piece of paper. And you put it into the toilet. And it will float on yeah. the water. And it the really will. It will float. Yeah. And then you go to the bathroom and... Produce a stool sample. Stool sample, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then you take this little stick and you kind of jab it into the stool sample about five times. And then you put it back in here. Too simple. Shake it up. Insert it in the bag and it'll have a postage paid envelope where you just mail it back to us. And then when we get it back, all we have to do, and, and this can't spill, it doesn't spill, either end. So we get it back, and we have the other end we open, and we just insert a test strip in there, and one line is negative, two lines is positive. It's as easy as that. And if, if so, so the, the postage will be paid, in a prepaid envelope so that they can send it right back to our health department. We'll do the testing at the health department. And then once we test it, we'll send them a letter. And the letter will either say, your test was negative, or the letter will say, your test is positive and give us a call and we'll help you, if you don't already have a primary care physician, we'll help you find one and we're going to offer them choices in the community. Um, and. Um, we're, one of the things that we're still in the process of is getting doctors to agree to uh, um, to um, have us refer patients yeah. to them. You don't want to test and not have somewhere, somewhere to send them. To send them. Yeah. yeah. And then if, um, if they come in and they get a test and we don't hear back from them, we're going to do follow-up phone calls, reminding them to do it. You guys can't imagine how many radon tests we gave out at the fair that we didn't get back. Um, we're still on those making phone calls. But if you don't call and remind people, they do forget. We all get busy, right? We all do. Um, but this is something that um, that is important. Now, we can't bill their insurance until we get the test back. So if we give this test kit out and we don't get it back, we're going to be sending them a bill for $10. That way the health department isn't going to lose tons and tons of money from people who come in and get a test and then don't use it. Because, yeah. I've got a question. It's not a silly question, but I'd be, I'd be curious to know how many at this table have ever had a colonoscopy. It's kind of personal. It's <laughs> <laughs> a personal question. You're a little young. Oh, well, yeah. You're a little young, but have you had one? No, I'm not that young. <laughs> You're young. Uh, You're pretty young too. <laughs> Have you had one? <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> it's not embarrassing. It's, it's you should have one. Tom got his hand raised. Yes, I've had many. You had one? <laughs> I've had many. It's yeah. so important. It's very important for women and men. It is. It's so important, and we want to make it very, very clear that this test does not replace that. Right. This is a test that if if you're if you're worried about that. This test may indicate to you that you need that, that follow-up, but this is a screening only. This is not a diagnostic test, and I keep repeating that because I really want people to know that we, we, we would so much rather that you go have a colonoscopy, but if you I'm won't... I'm actually in favor of this test because I'm not big on the whole medical <laughs> thing, but, you know, because I believe a lot... I, I would hate to know how many are not needed, you know, and they're expensive, you know, some between five and fifteen thousand dollars per mm -hmm. colon. If this could screen half of them, that's money saved. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this costs the taxpayer overall, but we are hoping that this program will not be remember, I want to use our tax levy for those six core public health services that we don't have grants for. This is a program that we hope will pay for itself. It should, it right, but I mean, itself. somebody had the research in making that kit, and they, they could have been all subsidized. We don't know that. Could have been expense to the taxpayers. We might as well use it. Yeah. We get, um, we, we, our, our budget, if you looked at it from last year, is right at a third, a third, a third. A third of our money is tax levy money, 
which we use for those six common core necessary programs that save everybody's life. The other thir another third is our grants, our grant amounts. And then the other third is our super service money from doing things like this. That's the money we bring in for, you know, fee for, all of those fee for service programs that you see on here. So, um, give him a sample. Give him a <laughs> test. <laughs> I've had my test. I've had hundreds of tests. And I'll be <laughs> honest with you, we're not doing this as a money maker. We're not right. going to make anything off this. This is not going to be profitable. It will, we hope, cover the nurse's time and make it so that we are, it's a break-even program. We're, we're a not-for-profit. You know, and I tell you guys this every year. I would love every year, you know, to, to be able to lower the tax levy for the people. I've said that every, every year to you. I, if I'm a taxpayer too, I want my taxes as low as possible. I want you to keep in mind, we are going to see these grants from the state of Illinois go down over the next few years. They are. They are. The state of Illinois is not doing well. And if you haven't figured that out, I don't think these are going to be sustainable in the long run. So what we want to do is be able to provide services and make them pay for themselves. Um, and use the only of the portion of the tax levy that we need to use. So we, we, you know, have been very tight with our money over the last three years because there was no state budget because there we weren't sure what, you know, we, we did, we've done better than what we thought we would do. But that's not going to be sustainable, people, and I want to make that clear to you so that you know that, that, these, these grants aren't going to, I, I don't think that they're, that in the long run we're going to see the state of Illinois providing all the services unless they just start taxing us to unbelievable levels, and I hope that that doesn't happen. Now with this new program, uh, it is new, so how are you going to get it out amongst people to know We'll do a press release, we'll and we'll, yeah, and it, it, our goal, my goal was, that by October 1st to get this up and going, we'll have this going here pretty shortly. But we would like to even take this to our flu clinics out in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. people want you know to do that. We'll be taking this everywhere we go for our other programs and offering this, just like we offer our radon test kits and our lead screenings and our you know all of our other services that we offer. We want to offer this Very good. to everyone. It's a good thing because our ultimate goal is Same to way. prevent is to save lives, yeah. Not have the death rate so high that if you're diagnosed with colon cancer, hopefully it can be caught early and you will survive. Good. So, any questions about that? Okay, one last thing. I'm just doing a little plug here. This is plug is not just for the health department. This is the press release that we wrote from the health department. But it is a program that we are involved in. We are um, in, in, um, involved in the Coalition for Care, which is huge amounts of people throughout the community. It is um, Iroquois Mental Health, um, it is Air Coalition for Change. Um, it is Iroquois Mental Health, it's the Health Department, it's Trinity Church, it's the Recovery, what do you call it? Celebrate, Recovery. Celebrate Recovery. It's um, First Place <coughs> Bank is involved, the Kiwanis are involved. Um, Lots of different local organizations have come together, um, and we are having a community opioid awareness event on October 18th. Um, Tim some Lyons, more of these? That's one of the, yeah. Do you have some more of those? I'll put them up at work, too. If you that can. is awesome, yeah. Here, pass that down. Time cards. Give yours away. I can give you another one. Yeah, I've got one. Of them. <laughs> I've got one of them. Um, from yesterday. This, this opioid awareness event, you know, in order to fix any problem in a community, the first thing that you've got to do is make people aware that there is a problem. Right. And so that's what we're trying to do here. So we're making, we want to make the community aware that we've got a problem, and it is affecting us. <coughs> so, <coughs> is a really good speaker. I've heard him speak a couple of times. He um, started the Man in Recovery Foundation. And he will be speaking um, in the morning at Glen Raymond Junior High School for all of the county 
um, junior high students. All county schools were invited to bus their students in. Some schools are doing it, some aren't, but they were all invited. Um, he'll be doing a lunch and learn with our coalition. He will be doing speaking in the afternoon to the high school students in the county. And then there's an evening program at Watsiki Community High School for the public yep. to attend. And we hope that oh, people will come and listen. He's a very blunt speaker. I was very, um, very forthcoming when I let um, people know that he, he, he's a blunt talker. Um, I can say this to you. I love when somebody walks through the fires of hell and they come out carrying buckets of water mm -hmm. for those who are still engulfed in flames. Mm -hmm. That is this man. Um, he's been there. He's lost a child to it. He's been incarcerated because of it. He tells it like it is. Mm -hmm. It's not pretty. Um, we'll have child care available because we don't want children, to, small children, to hear this. But he will tell you what it's really like and what really happened. Mm -hmm. And it is eye-opening mm -hmm. that this is happening to people all over our community and we're um, not going to turn a blind eye anymore. Um, if we want to fix something, I, you know, we often sit in, back in our seats, guys, and we say, boy, I wish somebody would do something about that. Well, guess what? We're somebody. We can do something about this. But our first step is making people aware of what's going on. Right. So that's what we're going to do. And we encourage you all to come. And he's being <clears throat> funded through a whole bunch of different organizations, including some public health money. Oh, we can get you as many as you like, okay. and I'll deliver them wherever you want. I'm going to take them back to work. Yeah. That'd be great. Right. Mm -hmm. Any questions about it? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Thank you. Anything else uh, for Dee? Anybody? Hearing none. Is there any old business to come before the committee? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. Is there any new business to come before the committee? What would you like to hear about next month, Mr. Cromweedy? Is there any programs that any of you would like to hear about next month? We try to pick one every month and, and give you a little information on it. So we have up the list yeah. you want to hear about? I'll pick She's one. She's done very good. Yes. She's done very good at picking pick one. one. Okay, very I'll pick one. Thanks. Mm -hmm. With no more new business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. It's been moved by Dan, second by Barb. All in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.